Imagine a life in which you cannot enjoy or even have sex. How you will feel if you are unable to express yourself sexually? Well, that is the life that leaves a lot of people in earth. Like a lot of people cannot enjoy and cannot have sex. That is reality. And you may ask, why? Why is that? You know, sex, sex is so good, right? Sex is like how they say in Puerto Rico, the maracachimba of life. How can be that people do not enjoy or have sex? Well, many reasons for this particular case. Some people are just asexual and some people age kicks in and diminish her libido and capacity for sex expression. But for a, a good chunk of this population that cannot enjoy or have sex, they cannot do it because they had a problem. They had a sexual problem, something little. Something almost imperceptible. Not a big issue at first, but they didn't care about it. They continue having sex. They continue having their normal life. They didn't go to a psychologist. They didn't go to a medic. Nothing. So that sexual problem starts to escalate, maybe for stress, time, uh, different situations, genes, different type of hormones, variation. And then suddenly, but not that suddenly, that person is one day unable to have healthy sex. Maybe they cannot have an erection. Maybe they are not producing sufficient vaginal fluids. Or maybe it's a low libido. Maybe it's whatever it is but they are not having sex. So the real issue with this, with this problem is that some of these small problems that escalate until murdering your desire for sexual expression are so little. These things are so normalized sometimes, so common, that you may have one, you may have one, and it's like a cancer. You start with one cell, and it goes, grows, 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 grows. So my objective with, with this free video lesson for you guys and women, my objective is to delineate specifically 10 of the most common sexual problems that exist today based on my own research and my own philosophical introspection and based on what I have seen in my patients, clients, and thousands of people that follow me on TikTok where I am developing a community of conscious Uh, a conscious sexuality community. So I have been working on this video lesson for a long time right now. So my objective is to give you those 10 common problems and some ideas on how to correct them, how to solve them now before it's too late, before, before you are unable to enjoy one of the most wonderful spiritual things that we can undertake in our life, sex.
I will encourage you to stay into the end of this video lesson because at the end, I will give you a bonus common problem, a, a common problem that I will not mention in the, in the specific ones, in the 10 ones, but that that is a bonus is the most critical. And obviously I'm doing this on purpose because I want you to digest all the material, but you may don't have each one of the 10 that I am describing, that I will be describing, but the 11, the bonus one, hot boy. I don't know, maybe 50% of people will have this one. Maybe 50%. That is a crazy statistic. I don't read any research under that, right? That is just an approximation of my own analysis, subjective analysis. So also I want to mention that I will be launching this Friday my course, Sexual Mastery, that has been on the public right now, like for two months, Spanish only. I will be launching this Friday the English version of Sexual Mastery. So if you stay at the end, you will hear also a special offer to my Sexual Mastery English version course. So right now, the Spanish version doesn't have any offer. So you, if you want it, you need to pay the full price. And it's not like a crazy price, but you're really going to learn like everything that you need to, how to be a sexual master. But in Spanish, you don't have any offer. In English, you will have an offer that I will announce at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that as well. And um, a small warning before beginning. Most of these common problems, these sexual common problems that I will be describing, most of them may have a biological or medical cause. And if that is the real cause of that problem, doing what I will teach you to do, practicing the solutions that I will give you today for free, those solutions may not work so effect effectively because you are not treating the biological aspect of your sexual problem. For treating a biological aspect, you need to go to a medic, not to me. I'm a psychologist. At the end of the day, I will teach you to, to do some things with your mind. But sometimes, you know, we need also a medic in the team. And it's a very important element in the holistic health. So I just want you to know, maybe some of these problems are biological rooted. So you need to check on that with a medic or an expert if you find that you have this problem. And this is the thing. Some of you will watch this video and you are like, <laughs> oh, Derek, oh yeah. Yeah, I watch you because you are funny, man, and you are smart, <laughs> but I don't have any sexual problems, dude, you know, I'm a, I'm a sexual master myself, you know, and um, yeah, but I will watch, but look at what I'm about to talk Spanish. What is, we, what will may go on, what may go on is that you may think that you may have that confidence, but then I will mention a symptom or a problem that you may say, oh, oh, that happened to me sometimes, you know, and um, oh my gosh. So don't be overconfident. These are very common problems. You may have one. Be open mind and let's go with it, my friends. So share this live if you are watching on Facebook and if you are on YouTube, on Instagram, leave a comment, say hi, and um, let's go. First, common sexual problem is, man, this is very common, especially with younger people, people like adolescents or young adults, people that are starting to experiment with sexuality. This is very common for them. 
Older people, not that much. And it is called performance anxiety. Performance anxiety. And this type of anxiety, it can happen in everything. It doesn't have to be specific for sex. Like you can have a performance anxiety, for example, to public speaking or to do a live video or to uh, take an exam in the university. Is That is the anxiety for a specific event in which you will be doing a type of performance. A performance is something that you act. You know, when you are playing basketball, that is a performance. When you are kissing a girl, that is a performance. When you are making a joke to the class, that is a performance. But sexual behavior, like having sex with your wife, with your boyfriend, guess what? That is a performance. So sometimes if we have a bad experience sexually, like a traumatic experience or something, a bad performance, well, we can develop further uh, performance anxiety due to this fact. And what is going to happen is that every time that you need to have sex, you will feel a small anxiety in your chest. Like, I'm a kind of anxious. Now, it is not the same to be nervous. Because, for example, if you are going to have sex with this hot man, like this almost 250 pound, almost like beast, very muscled, triple H kind of man, and you desire him so much, right? And you're about to have sex with him, you may feel nervous and that is perfect. You know, that is okay. But if you are continuously having sex with him and that is like, you know, something standard now, and you still have that nervousness that is more anxiety-based, like kind of, uh, you know, your heart pumping and um, and you you are looking for excuses maybe to delay the sex session because you don't you don't can you cannot manage your anxiety you cannot sleep the night before because you know that you will have sex those kind of abnormal reactions well that is not being nervous that is something more a.k.a. pathological. I don't want to say it's very pathological because I don't like that word and I don't like the paradigm of sickness, but that is more serious, let's say. That is more serious. That is a performance anxiety. Now, how can you solve this? Well, First, you need to understand, my friend, that sex, it is made to be fully felt with complete openness, with complete authenticity, and with complete surrender. That is the infrastructure of a healthy sexual behavior. If you understand that anxiety have no room in sex, maybe you start transcending the anxiety. You don't have to have anxiety. Sex, it is supposed to be enjoyable. When you have sex, you are supposed to forget everything that is troubling you during the mundane, normal life. And it is supposed to connect you with this present, infinite, unlimited potential present moment to do the further engineering that I teach you how to do in the sexual mastery course. But anxiety has no room in this formula. So we need to eliminate it. Because it is not a viable that is invited 
to the sexual session. It is an intruder in the sexual session. So the first thing that I will that I will do is just breathe before the sexual act very profoundly. If you know some breathing exercises, do those. But just concentrating in your breathing will alleviate some of that anxiety. Also, understanding that there is no other standard in sex than having a nice time. When we put these standards, like I need to make my partner have five orgasms. What a standard, dude. You know, if you think like that, you, you will provoke anxiety. Or you may have the standard, I need to make my man today like satisfied as he has never been satisfied before. Yes, those things sometimes can motivate behavior, but sometimes can be a limit because they are so, so much and can give you a lot of anxiety. So um, diminish your standards in sexual behavior and just understand that sexuality and sexual conduct is for having fun. You don't need to do a report after sex. You don't need to do an essay after sex. No one will give you an exam after sex. So completely relax. There is no one judging. When we have anxiety perform performance by anxiety, uh, anxiety by performance or expecting a performance, the thing is that we are always in our mind. We are thinking what the hell other people will be thinking about us. But who is the other people? No one is watching your sex. Well, if you are a porn star, maybe, but normal people, no one is watching you. The only person that knows your sexual capacity and performance is your partner. And if a bad case scenario presents itself and you have a, a very bad performance, let's say, you can always communicate with your partner, right? And you can always express your frustration, your fears, and you can always rely on emotional support. Now, I know that some partners are very mediocre, mediocre in supporting emotionally, in listening. I know. But that then is a good reason to leave your partner, right? Why the hell do you want to be in that relationship? So I am expecting that at least you are with a good person that can understand your process and that can give you the sense of security that you need to diminish your sexual anxiety performance, your performance of your anxiety of sexual performance. Now, if you're a single person that you don't have like a strong relationship I and mean, you are just having sex randomly so you cannot have that confidence with the person to surpass this limitation of performance anxiety what I will do I will educate myself in how to be a sexual master not only with your genitals So the anxiety will be more balanced and more harmonized because when you are only relying in your genitals to do a sexual operation, to do a successful sexual operation, dude, you're fucked. Because you're, you are only relying in one tool. Let's say it's a bad example, I know, but it's so in my mind the Ukrainian war versus Russia, Russia, right? If Russia or United States or whatever only use one type of military tool or technology, is that an effective army? 
No. If the Russians only had tanks, only tanks, but they don't have infantry, they don't have air force, they don't have uh, coast guard or the ocean uh, kind of, uh, you know, soldiers, whatever. They don't have anything, just tanks. Are they an effective army? No. They are a stupid army, right? Because you cannot rely in only one tool for doing complex stuff like sex and warfare. So if you decentralize the anxiety by developing more skills with other tools, like for example, your tongue is a tool in sexual behavior. Your mouth is a tool. Your hands are a tool. Your body is a tool. Your mind is a tool. Your spirit is a tool. You can develop so many other sexual resources and capacities rather than just trusting your vagina and your penis to do your work. Now, that doesn't mean that the vagina and the penis are not important. They are essential. You will get there. But before getting there, you can do extraordinary things to achieve extraordinary sexual, sexual results. You see? Second sexual problem and how to solve them. And is this, this is a very common one for women. This is one of the most common one for women that I know. And is this one. The problem of not reaching an orgasm. Now, this may have biological roots, as I say in the beginning. But let's say that your vagina is completely perfect. You don't have anything biologically wrong with your vagina. And with any other part of your brain or any other part of your central nervous system that will, in a way, conduct the orgasmic operation physically. So let's say that you're completely for perfect in this example. So what is going on then? Well, a couple of things may be going on. One is your psychology. Some psychological aspects of you are blocking the surrenderness, the openness, psychologically and spiritually, that is necessary to reaching what Wilhelm, uh, Wilhelm Rich, famous psychoanalyst, called the orgasmic potential. The orgasmic potential. That is basically your capacity to have an orgasm, right? So that is one dimension, your psychology. The second dimension is your partner. Right? If your partner your partner sucks in bed, or maybe he doesn't suck, but he sucks with you because he doesn't adjust to your style or the chemist, the chem, uh the chemistry is not there, kind of yet chemistry. And um so maybe that is another factor. So let's say let, let's go one by one. First, your psychology. When you have a lot of sense of control in everything in your life, not only sex, you will have problems. You may have problems achieving an orgasm because you also want to control everything in the sexual behavior or you are too much in your head. When you are too much in your head while having sex, you are away from the body. So let's say that experience of humans are like, like a spectrum. You can experience the experience more in your mind and you are getting away in that spectrum from the body. Or you can experience that, you know, the human experience more near the body and you are getting away of mind. When we are having sex and we want to have an orgasm, just raw orgasm, raw sex, without doing sexual magic, 
without doing spiritual transformation through sex, we are without doing any of the complex, sophisticated things that I teach you all the details in my sexual mastery course. When we are just having brute sexual manifestations, just sex. Well, you want to be very, very, very connected to the body because that is where, where the sense get the pleasure, right? Where That is where you delight yourself in the sexual experience. And that is the way that you will achieve your orgasm. That is for most people. Now, if you are too much in your head, thinking whatever, and you are not focused on your body, it's going to be very difficult for you to achieve an orgasm. So this one of the possible solutions for you. This is only a potential solution. Focus all your attention on the body while having sex. On the body. If a thought comes, and it will, because, because thoughts come, you know, that's what they do. You just leave it relaxed. You don't engage with it. One thing is to have a thought. Another thing is to engage with the thought. Do you understand this? So you don't have to engage with your thoughts in sex. Engage with your man. Engage with your woman. Engage with the intersex individual. I don't care who are, you know, who is your partner, but connect with the body. Another thing is, another technique that I know that works is think, thinking things that excite you. So when you are thinking things that excite you, notice how you are leaving away a little bit the body and going to mind. But it's a good technique for some people. So don't be a chain to play your sexual fantasies during your sexual session. Although you don't maybe act in the sexual fantasy. That's, you know, and this is a complex idea a little bit of controversial also. But the th this is the thing. Your sexual fantasies are a call for healing. <laughs> this is a crazy thing. The sexual fantasies that you have, those that you never tell no one, are a call, an invitation for healing. To become one. Healing means to become one. It's the same thing to achieve infinite love. Right. So by doing your spiritual work through sex, playing your fantasy, you can facilitate that healing. It's more complex that, than this. Um, it may vary depending on the fantasy, depending of, on the wound. It may vary a lot. I am overgeneralizing here a little bit, but th this may help. So the main point is play your fantasy in your mind. You don't need to act it in the real life, but play it in your mind and understand the fantasy. Why is there? And if you do that consciously, not unconsciously, but consciously, like in a meditative, introspective kind of awareness, and you do this with a person that you trust, you will notice that the content of the fantasy will change. It's exactly what happens with dreams or daydreams. They change their content based on healing. And we psychologists, we know this from millenn not millennia, but like a century ago, for centuries. So, yeah. Now, if the problem is that your couple that your relation, you know, your partner sucks in bed and he cannot give you an orgasm, well, 
you have a lot of communication to do. You have a lot of training to do. You know, think about your, and this is going to be another controversial idea. Sorry, guys, but sex is like this. Think about your partner also, not like a pet, but something that you can train as a student. Maybe it's a, a, you know, a better term. Every partner that you have in your life, they must be open sourced. They must be an eternal student of your sexuality. If they are not willing to be a student of your sexuality, they are not willing to be with you and to share, to share with you the miraculous life that you will lead. Because you're a sexual being and a sexual dynamic being. And that means, and that means that you will change sexually, normally, through time, through stages. And if they cannot take the time to actually come to understand again what excites you, what makes you happy, what satisfied you, well, maybe they are not a good match for you. So you need to train your partner forever sexually. And they will train you. It is not like you know and they don't know. No, it's a mutual reciprocal training. That is how we achieve sexual mastery, infinite intimacy. Now, and a training, a training may, may not look like you both sitting down with a list like in a corporation or in a job, you know, like training like that. It may look like, for example, having just a normal conversation about your sex, your sex life in the supermarket. Yeah, in the supermarket. I do it all the time. I try to, you know, to talk about whatever in the supermarket sometimes. And my wife is like, and they don't reinforce me, but I try to do it. But the main point is do it normally. Do it like a common thing. Sex in silence is bad sex. So if you don't talk about it, if it is a taboo for you, uh, probably that's why you don't have orgasms in the first place. You're blocking all the energy with morals, with ethics, that are self-invented and cultural propagated, culturally propagated, right? And um, yeah. So let's go to the next one, the third common sexual problem and how to solve them or to solve this one. But I will be teaching 10. And the 11 is the most common and devastating one. It's the nuclear bomb of the sexual problem. So stay until the end. And also remember that you can check in the description uh, or in my biography on Instagram, my new offer in sec uh, for the sexual mastery course, English version. And let's, let, let's see, maybe this is the offer that you have been waiting for to revolutionize your sexuality. So that is also on the description. Let's go with the third one. Man, this is very, very common, especially for men. This is for men, mostly. Not, not, it's not that women do not have this, but mostly men. Lacking interpersonal connection. This is the typical guy, or let's say guy, that have sex but never getting love. And now, this is a problem or not? Well, it depends. One, thing, one, one of the things that I like about psychology, specifically clinical psychology and the DCM, and that is basically the book that tells what is a pathology and what is not a pathology, psychopathology, um, is that establish that books that we use, establish very firmly that if the thing that you are noticing, it is not causing self-stress or others, you cannot say that that is a psychopathology. So for having a real psychopathology, you need to suffer from it in a certain way. You need to have distress. 
if no one is no one else is problem by your quasi psychopathology potential right if no one else is bothered by that and you are not bothered you may be bipolar but you are not diagnosed with bipolar disorder because it doesn't give you any stress and that is highly uncommon that a bipolar will apply to this example but you get the point anyways but this is the thing if this person that is lacking interpersonal connection in bed right if this person do not consider that this is a problem and he's good with this or her, or she's good with this and the partner doesn't care either well then this is not a problem this is only a problem when the man or the woman that is lacking the interpersonal connection in bed in sex wants to have it but cannot have it then this gives distress and then this is a problem so what you may do about this again we 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 always come back to the principles of sex let me remind you what are the principles of sex because if you go to the principles you can almost <laughs> solve all of these problems without a specific technique or medication some you know in a lot of cases what are the principles of sex enjoyment being relaxed being open being receptive and surrender and that is the most important one surrender but when you are the macho macho if you saw despicable me i think it was the second one you know the minions movie uh i was seeing, i was seeing that movie with my, with my daughter a couple of months and there's a character that is called the macho it's a mexican stereotype um about this kind of like a wrestler macho very strong with a lot of hair in his chest that archetype right and um so if you're like that if you are a macho right if you are a very macho kind of guy oh man probably you have problems with surrendering in bed you always want to be dominant you always want to have control right because you are the macho So when you are the macho, you don't have a lot of space to share vulnerability, intimacy, connection, transference of emotion, synchronicities. You are just doing your macho thing. But you are not doing the emotional thing. And then you um, question yourself or question the universe or ask yourself why I cannot connect because you are a macho. Surrender, bro. Surrender. And by that, I mean let your partner have the active role in bed completely and you just focus on your emotions and in your love and in your kindness 
and in your connection and expressing that. And this is a very feminine capacity. So that's why it's very difficult for guys because they cannot even express it. It's so difficult. So difficult for guys to say, I love you, baby. You change me. You make me a better man. You know, those things, those words that the emotion is bringing it up. But they stay silent. They stay macho. They stay. And the emotions are blocked. Boom, 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 blocked. They, can, they are in a prison of the structure of macho. <laughs> so you just. Focus on your emotions and focus on the vulnerable part of the session. And you may liberate or free some of your emotions that will facilitate the connection. Now, connection needs more also to happen. Connection needs trust. That is, man, trust is so important for relationships. Like without trust, dude... Very difficult situation for everything. For your kids, like taking care of the kids, economical decisions without trust are very erratic. Sexual performance without trust, very bad, you know. So trust is important. And if you don't trust your partner, you will not connect deeply with them or with your partner, with him or her, right? So you need to then build trust, engineer trust. How do you do that? Communication, bringing the problems, talking about the elephants in the room. What are the elephants in the room? All the things that you know that you should be talking as a couple, but you never bring that up. And then that is manifested in the sexual act as a problem, as a symptom that we call the elephant in the room because everyone knows is there, but it's under the bed, it's hiding. So you don't want, you don't want to hide the elephant in the room, you know. Let's go with the next one. And this is strictly for males or intersexual individuals that have penis. Lacking erection. Or maybe having an erection, but not a potent erection. Not at, not at a full capacity. Now, again, this may be due to a lot of biological factors. Prostate problems, low testosterone, um, testicular problems, hypertension, heart problems, breathing or, or pulmonary, you know, I am not a medic, but there's a lot of evidence about deficiencies in erection and just general biological health. But in this example, let's pretend that you are perfectly in your body, nothing wrongs, but you still cannot have an erection. Couple of things. One, if you are an addict, if you have an addiction, this may and probably is affecting your erections. A lot of people think that cocaine, for example, is like this drug for having sex, right? Because you will use cocaine and you will become like, oh boy, I'm so ready, baby. Like if we, you know, we see these movies, like for example, um, how it's called? Wolf of Wall Street. That he's always using cocaine in the, in the booty of the model or the woman. Use that cocaine, have sex with her. And we think that is that. Well, it's not like that. Actually, cocaine can diminish the potency of your erections. Also, use of cigarettes, alcohol, even coffee. Common 
addictions may represent a problem. Also, cannabis. You know, I am not a hater of cannabis, but one of the things that cannabis really do is to affect spermatogenesis. That is the process in which men produce sperm and also affect the capacity for pregnancy in men. So that means that may affect also their erection. It, it, it affects the whole male sexual reproduction system. So addictions is one thing that you should solve first and then the erection may follow. That's just the main point. Another point is, again, having the performance anxiety. If you have an anxiety because you are putting yourself a lot of standards, you may have no erection. If you are in a hurry, like I need to do this now because we're going to get caught, blah, 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 blah. If you didn't pre-design your sexual session, if you didn't take the time to do something structured that you will feel relaxed, that may impact your erection also. What type of solutions can we do for this problem? Well, a common one, a very common one, is general exercise functions very well, works very well. Just get in shape, man. Get in shape. Cardiovascular, very good, because you will maximize how the process of the erection also happens in the, in the body. The process is basically based on blood, stream, and oxygen. So also study the cycle of an erection just to understand what is happening in the body when you have an erection, right? So general exercise works very good. Also, abstinating from ejaculation works very good. And specifically, if you are a 70 or 80 years old man, 60 also or 50, that, that you are starting to see diminishing uh, capacities for erection, one of the things that Master and Johnson and one of them, you know, a lot of scientific literature on sex recommend for, you know, having your health, uh, sexual health at maximum is to reduce your ejaculation frequency according to your age. So this is the this is a very cool thing. So you if you are a, a man from 10 years to 20 you choose, you can be ejaculating multiple times a day normally. Right? And this is a overgeneralization. This is just a concept. This is a model. This is not something that is strict, right? You know. This is just like a overview. From 20 to 30, if you're a man, you should be and you can ejaculate without problems one time every day, okay? one time per day, but not multiple times like when you was a kid. If you have the to, uh, from 30 to 40, you should be ejaculating um, 30 to 40, maybe maybe five times per day, uh, per week, five times per week, like having a little bit of breaks, but not too much. You are still very vital. From 40 to 50, maybe one day yes, one day no. That is famous. That is famous for, you know, the, the statistic of how many sexual sessions people have per week is three. That is like the normal of sexual contacts in a, in a relationship. But that is very common and normal in people that have, that have this age, 40 years, 40 years, 40 to 50, 35 to 50. 
because they are already naturally doing this, like having sex instead of every day, three times per week. That's, that's enough. If you have 50 years old to 60, maybe one every two days. And then like that and whatever. I I I I only uh no, uh I remember that um in the final stage, like the 70 years old and plus, you should be uh ejaculating maybe one time every month. One time per month. Yep. And I think it was when you have 60 to 70, one time per week. One time per week. So Yeah, that is the cycle. That is the cycle of life. Now, this cycle of life can be reinverted. And I call that sexual cultivation. And if you cultivate sexually your sexual energy, you can maximize your sexual energy forever. Like a lot of people, yogis, have been having sex forever. Like until they die because they cultivate their sexual energy. And I teach you how to do that in my sexual mastery course. The link is in the description, 20% discount off English version. So check that out. So let's go to the next problem. Lacking lubrication. Or we can call this vaginal dryness. Now, again, this can be medic, medically rooted. I know that strategen, uh, that is the primarily sexual hormone of women, um, can affect how wet they can be sexually, how lubricated they can be. And if you are in the, in the how do you say this word in English? Menopausia. I don't know exactly. Let me just check this real uh, this word right real quick here. Menopause. Oh, it's not that hard. Menopause. If you are in menopause, the strategy will also the strategy will also diminish, so that may affect a lot of uh, difficult uh, different biological roots for for this kind of symptom, but let's pretend that you are perfectly normal in your body and nothing is going on there. So why are you are, why you are not lubricating? Well, that may be again, a psychological factor, or maybe your partner do not excise you too much. So, If you are not ready to have sex, like if you don't want to have sex that day specifically, you may not lubricate. But the real problem is when you want to have sex, but you don't lubricate, that is the real problem. How do you solve that? Well, a couple of solutions. A lot of people go and really Go directly and buy an oil, a water oil or a water-based lubricant, and that function pretty good. Like now, that may work for you, but be careful because vaginas are very sensible. And you, if you want to buy some of these lubricant artificial, make sure that they are based on water just to be safe. You don't want to be messing up too much with the chemicals in your vagina. That's why the odorant for vaginas, they are not recommended. So leave your vagina as it is with the odor that it has. Be proud of the odor of your vagina. If you are a really sexual woman, a divine woman, a goddess, you should be proud of the odor of your vagina. What is that odor? Well, that, that odor is a mix of a lot of things, but that odor have pheromones. 
And pheromones are the chemicals that excite a man or a woman. So trust them. Trust your other. Trust your smell. Your fragrance, right? So by lubricating your vagina artificially, you are not solving really the problem. You are just solving temporarily the problem. Now, also, you should check your hydration because if you are not hydrated, that may be influencing. But again, we are going to always come, go to the, to the beginning, to the foreplay. How much time are you dedicating to the foreplay? Because that is when really the lubrication happens. Yes, you can have a squirt. And you can lubricate in a similar fashion as an ejaculation. And that can happen. But that is maybe in the sexual act itself. The first lubrication and the most important for facilitating penetration comes in the foreplay, come in the kisses, come in the massage comes in the in the words that you are saying with your partner during the sexual foreplay. So if you want to go straight to the point, straight to business with your partner, that may be a reason why you are not getting that wet. Don't go straight. Take your time. Take half an hour. You know, I used to recommend three hours of foreplay, but then I realized... A lot of people in my community in TikTok, the Amantes, they are called Amantes, and join us if you want. Follow me on TikTok. Uh, they were saying, oh, Derek, three hours of foreplay? Oh, man. That is unrealistic. Blah, blah, blah. So I thought about it and I said, yes, I do it in my personal sexual life, but I know that I'm a freak. And I know that I'm a weird guy. So I, I so I thought about it again and I said, hmm, maybe half an hour is a good metric for normal people. But at least half an hour will give you something. And it's not impossible. It's not impossible to have fun for half an hour and um and enjoy sex afterwards. And you will notice that if you do that, you will be more lubricated. Also, don't be afraid of, if you have a safe partner, like not someone random, and you know that they don't have, that he doesn't have, or she doesn't have like any type of virus or weird things, oral sex for lubrication is pretty good. Saliva is pretty good. Lubricant. Now, it is not the safer. It is not the safer, but it's pretty effective. So you may can you can may you may can, um you may explore that also as an alternative. And also, I want to say one more thing about this problem: a real or a kind of a very effective method to discern if your problem is biologically based or psychologically based or not not in that sense, but, but if it is more based with your partner versus you alone is what happened when you masturbate. If you lubricate just fine masturbating but not having sex with your partner, you may know that maybe is a relationship problem, not necessarily a psychological or physiological problem of vaginal lubrication. Okay. So let's go with the next one. This is for men, a very common problem, and we call it premature ejaculation. Premature ejaculation. What is this? when you ejaculate very rapidly. Sometimes in very, very severe cases, ejaculation can happen before penetration. In severe cases, 
it can happen before the guy can put his penis out of his pants. Like, really? That quick? Like, while he's trying to manobre... I don't know if that is a correct word. Or to navigate the operation of taking out his penis, he ejaculates. These are very severe cases. And if you have a severe case like this, I strongly recommend you to go with a psychotherapist or a sexologist, but definitely a psychotherapist, <laughs> definitely. Because that is too extreme. And probably some of the ideas that I will share with you will not work. So sometimes this happens because people or the men have a lot of tension, sexual tension in his system. And when you, um, how do you say, let me, let me look for this uh, word because I don't know how to say this word. English in Spanish will be hamaquear. Hang out? This not make sense, any sense. Oh, yeah. Well, when you move a Coca Cola, right? Like up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And you open, what happened? Explode, right? Well, that happened exactly with sexual tension. If you have a lot of sexual tension, a lot of it, as soon as you start to having a mechanism for liber liberating that tension, it will liberate very fast. So one technique that, that works is to ejaculate before having sex. Like if you know that you are going to have sex at approximately 8 p.m. and you have the problem of ejaculating very quick and that doesn't give you time to satisfy your partner. Well, if you are going to have sex at 8 p.m., masturbate at 5 p.m. in the shower, ejaculate there, release the tension. And then when you have sex at 8 p.m., you will be more relaxed and you will have less tension. Now, This is not a sustainable strategy because you can then become a masturbator or an addict, an addict to masturbation. So what is a more sustainable strategy? To liberate the sexual tension to all, you know, through other activities that are not sex related, like exercises, meditation, yoga, kundalini yoga, breathing, sports, creative acts, music, art, service, a hobby, like doing things that can release some of your tension to be more relaxed in the sexual environment and to be more able to endure the sexual session. Also, working with your breathing during your sexual section will manage pretty effectively your ejaculation as a man. So if you are breathing too rapidly, that is a bad sign. Probably you will ejaculate too soon. So learn how to breathe long breaths with power. You know, one of the most fascinating quotes that I have ever heard about is that is one that says the power the most powerful person is there in the room the most powerful person in the room it is the one that is breathing more deeply that that always is in my mind and that applies to sex whatever whoever is breathing more deeply is dominating the sexual act more profoundly because this is a sense, breathing is a sense of 
management of the forces that composed a sexual act. Forces like excitation, libido, tension, movement, speed, wording, touching, stress, all the forces that come together in a sexual act and make it happen. So breathe a lot. Next sexual problem. And remember, stay to the end because I will reveal the most common one as a bonus. Having low libido. And this may come a lot from biological roots and also addiction. But let's say that you are perfectly fine and no addiction there. So this may be, oh, by the way, libido, let me explain. Maybe you don't know. Libido is a very common term used in psychoanalysis, psychology, and medical literature to describe your level of sexual desire or sexual energy. So low libido means having low sexual desire. This may come with age. This may come with, uh, I forgot again the word, menopause, menopause, whatever. The thing that happened to women after 45, whatever. Menopause. I think, I think I'm saying it good. Menopause. Um, this may come due to hormonal imbalances, but let's say that you are good. Why this may be happening? Well, I always say sex is a reflection of life. Let, let's make that very clear. How you are doing in bed is how you are doing in life. A lot of people don't want to hear this advice. A lot of people don't want to trust this teaching because it's very, very threatening. So if you are having low desire for sex, that may mean that you have low desire for life. Low desire for creation low desire for leadership, low desire for expansion, for reproduction, for living, for laughing, for sharing, for connecting, for building a business. If you have low motivation for general stuff, maybe you will have low motivation for sex. Because when you are very, very motivated with what you are doing in your life, you are excited, you are vibrant, you are on your purpose. Well, believe me, my friend, that you will go to bed and you will make stuff, greatness happen in bed. Because that is a reflection of your life. So a good idea for low libido, besides general exercising, good nutrition, all the normal stuff that you should be doing anyways, but a very powerful thing to do is to reconnect with the virtue of life through your life purpose, through love, through meditation. <clears throat> me, give me just one second. Through meditation, through yoga, through decision, through commitment, with your goals, Hey, start with goal setting, man. Maybe you don't have a lot of energy for life because you don't have 
goals. Goals drive energy. So start by doing that, by dominating your life, and maybe your libido will come back. Baby, come back. The next common sexual problem, you may have it, and you may don't even know it, sexual addiction. Sexual addiction. And we can put here also addiction to porn, addiction to masturbation. or all the weird sexual deviations that we can encounter that are you know that people are may be addict to we we can call them fetish and you know fetish are not a bad thing but an addiction is something that corrupt your life an addiction is something that comes like a demon and steal your soul like you cannot manage without it you cannot live without it if you cannot live without sex if you cannot function or work without sex well you may be an addict of sex why this happens well happens like any other addiction happens because we are lacking something that we try to fulfill with the substance, with the object, with the experience that became, become addict to, and that really do not work long-term. It's, uh, it's a poor strategy, but we maintain it because then our body became addict to the certain neurochemicals and hormones that are producing the activity And then we can also become psychological dependent in the activity and we are stuck. So how do you solve this? Well, definitely you always can go a treatment, sexual treatment or addiction treatment center. You can always do that, work with a therapist, but as a complementary idea, As a thing that you can add to your, to your treatment is to learn to love. <laughs> yeah. Your addictions grow in proportion to your scarcity of love. Wow. That is a good idea for a podcast. Your addictions grow in proportion, in parallel, parallel, in positive correlation with your scarcity of love. Or we can say your incapacity to love or your unwillingness to love. So by learning to love, by striving to do that, by getting in a serious relationship, by pushing yourself to become intimate, vulnerable, dual with someone, to appreciate someone, not for the flesh, not for the body, but for the whole being. If you get you know, in love, if you fall in love, if you learn how to love, if you maintain love in your life, like a standard, like something that you give, like a projection, like, like a light that you give forever, you may solve your sexual addiction because you will not depend anymore. You will be fulfilled. Love is the most fulfilling thing that exists. That's why when you self-love, when you love yourself, you solve a lot of your mental health problems. Depression, anxiety, obsessions. Well, self-love will not guarantee that this happened, but it happens in a lot of occasions. It may happen. So love is a remedy for most of these um, problems, but specifically for addiction, because we are talking about lacking something Well, that let fulfill that something that you lack 
with another thing. Let's ful fulfill it. Let let transform that space in love. And maybe you will free yourself from your addiction. Next common sexual problem. And this is very common. Having a body complex or multiple, multiple complex. And that is a barrier for sexual satisfaction. So you may have a complex with your boobs or with your booty or with your penis or with your mouth or with your fatness or with your skin, whatever. You may develop a complex in whatever in your body. And that may be a barrier for infinite sexual connection because then you are thinking about the thing instead of thinking about the experience, about the sexual experience that you are living in the moment. You are thinking about, oh my God, is he seeing the big ear that I have? Oh my gosh, he's, he's seeing obviously my big ear and you are focusing on that. And that disconnect you from the body. Then disconnect you from the sexual synchronicity that you are having in that moment. Well, how do you solve that? <sighs> Let's start with acceptance. <laughs> a very good tip that a cousin of mine gave me is that all problems have a solution. And if it doesn't have a solution, it is not then a problem. It is something that needs acceptance. I will never forget that tip. So you may solve your body complex. I don't know. If you are fat, become in shape. If you are bald, do a surgery of a hair transplant. If you are, I don't know, you can try to solve it. You can do a surgery, <clears throat> but the thing is that it has been demonstrated that when you change your external factor, not necessarily your self-image will change. So your nose may be, may be pretty good now, but when you look in the mirror, you still see the crazy, ugly nose because your self-image the image that you have of yourself in your mind that is perceiving the nose in the mirror and that is analyzing and interpreting all the informations haven't changed. You cannot remove with a surgery your self-image that no one can do it. Only you can do it. Only you can hack your mind. Only you can transcend your own mental limita limitations. Yes, psychologists, we assist. We can help. We can assist. But only you can do it at the end, boy. So really what you need to do is accept your complex. Not only your complex, but the object of the complex, the nose, the feet, whatever it is, your hand, accept it completely, and then empower yourself from that perceived defect. Like, for example, if you are ashamed of showing a partner that you have a weird, uh, what can I say? If you're afraid that you will show them that you have a, a weird tattoo here, I don't know, tattoo is not a good example. It's not, it's not part of, it's not, it's not a part of your body. But what can I say? A scar. Let's say a scar. It's a part of your body now. So you have a surgery and you have a very big scar in your chest, right? You have a very big scar. And that gives you a complex. 
And now whenever you are, you're going to have sex, you want to stick with your shirt on because you don't want to show the scar. In this example, what you should do in the first date in the restaurant, whoo, show the scar in the restaurant. That is my advice for you. And you may say, what the hell? That will scare the hell out of my uh, date. <laughs> Well, it depends how you do it. Because if you just do it as I did now to make you laugh, well, that may happen. You may scare the hell out of your date. But if you start your date saying, hey, man, you know, I I am a man that, or I'm a woman that likes a lot to overcome myself, to transcend my own limitations. And let me tell you, I have been dating a couple of guys like you, you know, exploring options and probably you have been doing the same and I have been feeling uncomfortable with showing this part of my body and I don't want this to happen with you you know because I think that you are really great I think that you are a really nice date and I don't want to be thinking about this in the whole date and then maybe one day when we are together intimately if that happened I want to be fully exposed Impressive with you without holding nothing back. So let me say this to you, just to, if you don't want me after this, if you don't like me after this, I don't will, I don't will be mad with you, but I just want to say it right now up front, just to, just to uh, make sure that you want to proceed and he will be, or she will be like, okay, that sounds good. Right. And then you say, look, I have this car, man. Boom, and you show the scar. It was a surgery, blah, 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 blah. And what probably your date will do? What, what do you think it will do? Probably it will say, oh, wow, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that sounds oh, okay. And the date will continue on, right? And probably you will have sex normally. And you already removed your doubt. So that is a good idea for showing your complex. Now, if, if your complex is, is, is in your genitalia, well, showing your genitalia randomly like that may not work, <laughs> but you get the point. Last, man, my voice is, <clears throat> my voice is failing a little bit. What is going on? Well, this is my second video today. Maybe I'm out of shape because I was resting a little bit of these lives, working on other businesses. And um, so always when I come back, that first day, I feel my voice a little bit funny. So the last common problem, and remember, I will give you a bonus at the end. That is the most common one. So check that out. You don't want to fall into that one. So this common problem is lacking spontaneity. Lacking spontaneity. And basically when I'm thinking about it, this one and the bonus one are like two sides of the same coin. Like both go together so good. They are not the same thing, but they go together so commonly that I just decided let's discuss them together. And then we can grab this off. I will give you the special huge discount offer to my new course in English, Sexual Mastery, and we can go and live our life again without being here, right? <laughs> so the 10 is lacking spontaneity, spontane sponta spontaneity, spontaneity, and the bonus one, and this is most common, is being monotonous, being monotonous. So they are very similar, but not exactly the same. So lacking spontaneity, what do I mean by that? Well. 
What I mean by that is that you may be in your sexual session and you may think a lot of things, but you don't dare to do it. You are not spontaneous enough. You don't have the initiative enough to really express yourself sexually. And that will bite you in the butt in the long run. Because that is energy that you are not expressing. And when we are talking about sex, we are talking about being spontaneous and to conduct movements, sexual movements that heal our core, that heal our essence because we can heal through movement so when you lack that spontaneity well you are lacking that flow of energy so when you are monotonous we are not talking about lacking the spontaneity in bed only but we are also talking about always the same structure for your sexual session and This is a very common thing for people or for couples that have maybe 20 years in their pocket together, 30 years, that sex is not something so amazing anymore. It is not so extraordinary anymore. They can fall into this trap of the sexual monotony, always doing the same, falling into the routine and doing nothing to save the relationship or at least the fire of the relationship. So why we create monotony in our sexual life? Well, because it's convenient. It's convenient. Yes, you have a work, you have a job, you have a family, you may have kids, you have parents, you have clients, you have a life, right? So if you are always engineering new ways of sexually expressing yourself, that will, that will demand energy, that will demand study, that will demand inventiveness, that will demand creativity. And you have all the other things. So why, uh, which one do you sacrifice? Do you sacrifice your work or do you sacrifice your sex? Ah, uh, sex. Work is too important. That is why it pays the bills. Do you sacrifice your motherhood or your uh, fatherhood or sex? Uh, I sacrifice sex. You know, at the end of the day, I'm the most important role in this child life. I need to be 24-7 mother or father. Or maybe it's religion or maybe it's whatever. But notice how sex is always in the last place. It's like in the basement of your priorities. Until one day, you notice it's gone. And then you care. And then you say, whoa, where the sex went? It went through the window because you was not paying attention. You was not inventive enough to recreate your sexual experience. I have the determination to never have a similar sexual experience two times in my life not even with my wife. I have been with my wife, I don't know, we are going about, we are reaching four years now together. And I strive. Maybe maybe I haven't succeed, succeed every time, but I strive to always present a new charisma in bed. A new way a new thing, a new spark. I put the energy on that. That for me is a priority because I don't want to be, be here, come here to my podcast, to my videos, to my courses, to my books, to my clients, to my patients and talk about empowerment, and talk about success, and talk about sexual mastery, and go to bed being miserable and being erratic in bed. I, ca I cannot do that. I will be fragmented. I will be 
schizoid. I will be disconnected from my real truth. No, for me to come here and dominate my work, my career, my purpose, I need to dominate the bed. That is the foundation. That is the structure of relationships, romantic relationships. So being spontaneous and being creative, both are the solutions for the problems that we discussed in this final part of our video lesson today are imperative for your sexual repertory. Become more creative, become more spontaneous, do what you want to do in bed. Don't overthink about it, just do it. Just do it. And you will heal a lot of your sexual energy. Now, I hope that you reflected and self-analyzed where, where you stand in these problems. Do you have maybe one, maybe none? If you have none, good. Man, you are great. Now you are normal, right? You are in the average. But that means that you can go upwards and become a sexual master. If you have some of these problems, that means that you should be very proactive in solving the problem and then fully going fully for sexual mastery. For both, I can help you a lot with my course, Sexual Mastery. That is the step-by-step -step system that I have designed for you to achieve what I call sexual mastery. That is the total confidence in performance, total skillfulness in technique, and total unification with the sexual principles that will facilitate extraordinary sexual sessions and experiences for you. That is my promise. That is why I have been teaching to my students on my Spanish sexual mastery course. And now, <clears throat> from this Friday on, I will be launching the English version of the course. It is a course that you will do in your time, at your space, at your rhythm. You will have access to all the lessons and to all the guided meditations because also includes guided meditations to connect and, and to transform your sexual energy. So also includes a sexual challenges book, a dynamic mini book for your own uh, learning and mastery. And you will gain access to all at the moment of purchase. If you buy the Spanish one, if you buy the English, After Friday, you will gain access. If it is after Friday, well, you will gain access immediately. You will gain access forever. And my courses forever are going to be actualized. So I will keep putting content and exclusive material forever. Because, you know, sex is something that is dynamic and change. And theory change and the literal literature literature scientifically the scientific literature change and new stuff come out so i will keep you informed now if you buy today the english version of the course the link is in the description and in my biography instagram if you buy it you will have a 25% discount right now. And that is a lot of money. So do it now. If you really want to have an amazing sexual life, if you are not waiting no more, if you are ready to take the next step 
to fulfill your partner, yourself, your life, because at the end of the day, this is just life. Mastering sex is mastering life. Mastering life is mastering sex. But if you're ready to do it, this is the moment. You have a huge discount. You're, you're already gain momentum with this material. You're already in the zone for achieving sexual mastery. Go for it. And I see you in your sexual mastery. So I hope that this video helped you guys. Leave a comment if you want and also share it with your friends if you want. And I see you in the next one.